Hello, I trust that you're doing well. Welcome to Miss Fountain Channel, your go-to destination for insightful and engaging educational content. Here, we explore a wide range of topics from science and history to technology and beyond. Prepare to expand your knowledge and spark your curiosity with our carefully crafted videos. Subscribe now and join us on our journey of discovery. In today's session, we're going to look at forensic serology. And this is the application of the science of body fluids and tissues to the identification of the donor of the specimen that is the give of the specimen or from whom the specimen came from it incorporates the analysis of blood saliva seminal fluids fecal matter and vasculation and their relationship to a crime scene criminal cases include murder suicides, traffic, and other accidents. And civil cases, including uh, cases of paternity and maternity disputes, inheritance, etc. All of them uh, involve forensic serology at some point in the, in the investigation. Questions addressed by forensic serology. The first one is, what is the identity of the tissue or fluid? That is, is it blood? Is it a fecal matter? Is it saliva? It is it. The second one is, is the sample human or animal? And if it's animal, what species is it? The third question is, if human what group that is uh maybe looking at the abo blood group system the dna profile the secretor status etc and it's in, it's important to note that 80 percent of the world's population are secretors and this implies that uh they secrete their antigens into all their all their other body fluids i'm also going to briefly look at the overview of lab procedures that are involved in uh, forensic serology and the first one you have visual examination to establish the physical state this is just by using uh, naked eyes of uh, okay these were the forensic expert just uses their naked eye without going deep because they are just looking at the or establishing the the physical state then you have microscopic examination this is where a microscope is used. At some point, uh, maybe hard lines are used, etc. We have a uh, use of an alternative light source, and this is dependent on the place. Uh, then we have textile examination of clothing materials for items which may not be visible, like maybe cement, saliva, tears, etc. Then you find that these are followed by presumptive tests to confirm the presence of biological specimen. Present, presumptive tests like maybe the casomere tests for blood. And uh, further individualizing tests like the ABO blood grouping, DNA profiling, etc. In, uh, in our next video, we're going to look at uh, some of the presumptive tests and the confirmatory tests for the for the various body fluids okay ultimately find that all the results should be compared to an existing control sample a control sample is important in forensic science and it should always be there so that is uh, basically a brief introduction of forensic serology where we defined what it is, where it can be applied, the questions that it seeks to answer, and the the procedures, some of the procedures that are that are involved. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've uh, gained valuable insights and knowledge from today's video. Don't forget to subscribe for more enlightening content. And remember, 
learning never stops. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.